Good morning and welcome to Off the Press this morning, the program where we talk, tell you about the headlines in the national dailies and try to make sense of it. And with me this morning to do so is a legal practitioner, Ifi Oji. Good morning, Ifi. Good morning, Emeka. Always good to see you. Always a pleasure. Mm, welcome. So we have uh, some papers here, The Punch, we have The Vanguard, we have The Nation, This Day and Sports, uh, Complete Sports. But we'll be beginning with The Punch newspaper. It will be displayed shortly on your screen. And we see if FG China signed $3.9 billion FCT Itakwe Worry uh, real contract. And that story is on page 30, now displayed on your screen. And we have the picture story of Jonathan and President Buhari. Jonathan visits Buhari in Asuro, keeps mom. That's on page 9. No more evacuation from South Africa, says federal government. On page 2, bus purchase, purchase assembly threatens to order Ambodi's arrest. That's on page 9. And budgets. Buhari Oshibadon to spend 3.3 billion naira on foreign and local trips. That story is on page two. And President, Vice President's food to gulp 149 million naira. And Labour sets up team to study federal government's 2020 budget. And we have some picture stories of really bad routes there. And it says it's Abi Okuta Gege Moto Road in Lagos. Lagos, Abiyakuta, Expressway, Songo, and all of that, uh, you can see for yourself. And on page 14, 756 unqualified Quara teachers may be fired. They should be fired if they're unqualified, if you ask me. And then gunmen kidnap Kaduna principal, FCT couple, and a child. That story is contained in, on, in pages four and seven and 41, rather, of the Punch newspaper. And Ekiti proposes castration for sexual offenders. That's on page seven. If you can see your face, even me, I wonder. So where do we begin this morning? <laughs> uh, let's look at the infrastructure. Let's look at the China deal okay. with the federal yes. government. China has been in bed with uh, Nigeria for a while now. It's no secret as well that uh, we've really struggled in terms of infrastructure. And we've had our challenges with infrastructure in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and it's not getting better, obviously, with the um, inc you know, massive increase of population as expected, explosion as expected by 2050 mm. in Nigeria. So uh, the deal basically is a typical China-Nigeria deal where we've given off a little more than we ought to have given mm. off. So we're, we're down to like 85% or equity for the China and we only get a, um, um, returns of on 15% 15%. of the deal. Uh, they've tried to find uh, ways of masking what you know the the real nature true nature of the deal by saying okay well we're going to have a special purpose vehicle that will be um, established uh, for the project and they've basically said that uh, the money will be but but oh, lo and behold the money is coming from the Chinese uh, government or mm -hmm. through the Chinese uh, National Chinese Bank so I don't see how this is now a Nigerian uh, project or mm. Nigerian uh, so to speak yes it's it's obviously more of a China deal and we're just riding along and uh, no pun intended mm. on the train that China has provided for us no pun intended I like that so and then there's this story and there's no more evacuation from South Africa well what do you think because after the visit well I mean you just have to look at even uh, just the 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 you look at the, the basic, basic idea behind what people are doing in terms of their holidays and what they, where they choose to spend their money for tourism in Nigeria. It's considerably down based mm. on the efforts that are made by Travel South Africa and other uh, tourist companies uh, to promote tourism in South Africa. So we know that there's definitely a, a rift that is, you know, in, in certain ways unspoken, in more ways more explicit mm. between Nigeria and South Africa. And it's just a question of uh, trying to re rekindle or build, rebuild those ties based on what we know has transpired over the last couple mm. of weeks. So well, we say those, the federal government has said those who are still willing to come back can come back home, but those who want to stay can stay back because according to them everything is sorted, so to speak. Well, I mean, we're glad that at least they had the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. You know, even if, even if even though it wasn't on neutral territory, which would have been ideal, mm -hmm. you know, just to say that both parties are giving uh, something, putting something forward in terms of trying to realistically make uh, the relationship work mm -hmm. long term. But we are hopeful, and yeah. we know that we can only benefit from a more united Africa. That's true. Correct. Okay, and then um, I think a uh, budget uh, Buhari or Shibajo to spend 3.3 .3 billion on foreign and local trips. Uh, I, I think the government typically tends to give. Get a, a really hard time when it comes to budgetary uh, 
requirements or, or yes our allocation exactly i think the, the main issue would be because of the budget budget deficit mm. so typically if we were making enough money to warrant these trips or warrant the food or warrant any kind of allowances i don't think uh, it will make we'll such yeah we'll be too worried exactly looking at the president of the trade union congress tuc he they are also looking into it to make sure that the budgets as has as has been presented mm is what uh, the typical labor, uh, organized labor will be uh, happy with, mm. you know, for 2020 and beyond. All right. So. OK, so um, now I, I, I saw your face. It would be when I read it, that Ikiti proposes castration for sexual offenders. It's one of those things where culture meets a bit of ignorance mm. and meets a bit of overzealousness as well. Mm. So we understand that there are societal issues, there's societal decay, there's moral decay, yeah. but you, you have to be more, you have to take a bit more sort of measured steps than basically castrating is such an mm. archaic, draconian position to take. I mean, I know certain states in Nigeria right now have, uh, have sort of uh, put together, instituted a, a sex offenders register. Mm. That sounds like a more realistic to position do. to have, yeah, than to think of castrating. I mean, we're not, we're not looking for eunuchs in Nigeria. We're looking for people that would actually bring value to the table. Mm -hmm. And if they can be functioning members of society, at least we let us identify them and name and shame them name instead of shame. castrating them. Mm, yeah. I, I completely agree, you know, when you talk about the name and shame thing. Yes, yes. When you bring people to the fore like that, yes. um, everyone is aware and action is taken absolutely you know. absolutely I'm okay. all right so that's it on the punch newspaper just very quickly behind the punch newspaper is a column there reducing the cost of governance the is the a's have it and uh, that's a friday musings with ayo ulu cotton uh, please grab a copy of the punch newspaper and find out what that is about and then we'll very quickly we'll go to the vanguard newspaper it will be displayed on your screen uh, gunmen storm another Kaduna school and abduct principal, and that's on page eight. And online media will be regulated, uh, says Lai Mohammed on page nine of the Vanguard newspaper. And its 120 bus purchase, Lagos Assembly threatens to arrest Ambody and others. And that's on page 10. Jonathan keeps mom after meeting Buhari in Asso Rock. And again, that's on page nine of the Vanguard newspaper. And says Nigeria's oil output adds 400. Uh, thousand barrels per day as trans for Cardis returns and that's on page 19 fake drugs inside Nigeria's market of death anybody is a pharmacist federal government lacks political will to check minutes according to PSN and treatment failures fake drugs at alarming rates according to NMA and most substandard drugs imported according to MAN this, uh, this story you will find on page five, I think is an interesting one there, and has a picture story of a display of drugs and there's someone on the other hand, the other hand trying to pay or some show of cash there. And how Nigeria's uh, reject, rejects became Bahrain's pride. That's a sports on page 45. And 240, 24 rather, 24 billion naira pension scam, beg your pardon. EFCC traces 29 houses worth 1 billion naira to Maina, and that's on page 8. The federal gov uh, government, China, signed 3.9 billion naira contracts to link FCT with Itape worry, uh, worry by rail, and that's on page 9. Sell all fortified assets, forfeited rather assets, uh, Buhari tells anti corruption agencies. Well, that's on page 9 also of the Vanguard uh, newspaper, and behind it is the sports news. If he, is there anything catching your attention here at the sports? Uh, you know, I'm a big technophile. I love technology. I love the idea of it transforming our lives, especially where we're at a disadvantage and trying mm -hmm. to use it to propel and get ourselves to where we need to be at power with the rest of the world. I mean, I'm looking at what uh, Lai Mohammed is saying, saying and mm. I'm actually a bit, little bit disappointed because mm. Nigeria's last ICT law was in the 90s. Mm. The last, if you look at it in comparative terms with other African countries, for example, I know we've spoken Rwanda. about this before personally, mm. Rwanda and Kenya, yeah. they, they come up with laws as and when necessary to, uh, to en encourage and enable uh, growth 
through yes, technology. Yes, in the ICT sector. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to go back to, our, I, I feel like our glory days are behind us, especially with a uh, former Honorable Minister of ICT, mm. um, Mobala Johnson. People may say that I'm a fan, but yes, I am, because she really it did put huh? a lot of efforts, you mm. know, the framework, ICT framework that was proposed and all other kinds of measures that were proposed to really massage and to really sort of coax the uh, market to make sure that we were where we are today. But alas, if, we're, yes, if, if yeah. our main interest is revenue collection, I understand right now Nigeria is going through a very tough time mm. and we're trying to basically, we're on a, we're on a massive campaign. It, the headlines sort of echo, all the different headlines echo this. We're on a massive campaign for revenue collection and debt collection. So if this is the, if this is the way they're going to get into, back into uh, making ICT um, a main concern, then I am all for it. But I just wish we had done this a lot sooner. Mm. All right. Uh, the, again, government storm another Kaduna school abducts principal. That's another story of insecurity. That's just some weeks ago there was something yeah. again in uh, Kaduna. Well, we hope that um, yeah. something be done. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Also, also with the fake drugs in the market. I mean, yeah, as if it, this is really it's it's, scary. It's, it's very, very scary, and it's it again. It just shows you about the decay of the society, and the idea that it just it 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 it's runs through many themes, from you know. Colonial, modern colonialism mm -hmm. with them for the flooding of uh, goods, uh, rejected goods from different into developing countries into our market, stifling even uh, trade, you know, within our local manufacturers that are painstakingly making sure that they are up to standard with NAFDAQ. It also echoes of the glory days of uh, the late great Dora, Dora Queenly, who was such a champion. If we could clone her, we could make other people that are, you know, that look at Nigeria and as a valuable place, we would be in such a in such a different uh, position right now, you know. And uh, it's really sad because people are dying on a daily basis, yes. needlessly, you know. And we need to try and find a way to uh, rectify uh, this problem. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's really scary, you know. When I looked at this, what quickly came to my mind is how you see, you know, the regular people who sell on traffic, selling traffic, selling drugs. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, how do you know this regular? man how did you become a doctor a pharmacist to say i should sell panadol and all of that and that's how we end up with fake drugs and instead of getting treatment people get more ill when they you know buy the wrong drugs and get the wrong prescription and like you said i hope something be done Absolutely. and be done immediately oh, the president said that uh, sell all forfeited assets uh, buhari tells anti-corruption agencies would that be a better approach i mean well i mean at the end of the day Yes, because a lot of the, these assets are just uh, vehicles mm -hmm. for, you know, for, as they call them in, in Nigerian parlance, for washing the money, you know. So, again, as I had mentioned earlier on, where there's a huge unsaid, but it's very palpable. Like reading any of the headlines that there is a huge and massive campaign for, to, revenue, collection. for revenue collection, debt collection, mm. making sure that Nigeria is at a, uh, has a economic, economic uh, health. Is, mm. that, is that as, as optimum as a position as possible? Mm -hmm. So this is, I guess, I'm sure this is one of the measures that they've, they've spoken about and behind closed doors, and I'm sure we're seeing it through the headlines. All right. So, okay. So we quickly turn to the back of uh, the Vanguard uh, newspaper, and basically it's sports news, as you can see there. Adek Pojo offers tips on how eagles can beat Brazil. Okay, so that's on uh, Brazil uh, versus Nigeria. And then there's something here. I've slept with Ronaldo more times than my wife, whoever this is, Roberto Carlos. And I find out what that's about. Eagles have full house trained in Singapore. Uh, well, we heard that two people uh, have uh, been withdrawn. So instead of 23 players, we'll have 21. But mm -hmm. the coach says they will be all right. So a table withdraws from Brazil friendly. And Brazil 1-1 uh, Senegal. Neymar's 100 cap ends in draw. So please grab a copy of... Um, the Vanguard newspaper and find out again what uh, it is about. We'll go to the Nation newspaper now where Fashola uh, says 157 billion Naira road budget is too low. Ministry owing already 2.93 billion Naira. The federal government Chinese signed a 3.9 billion real deal. Hope for a Takwe Abuja line. That's on page 34. You would find that story on page 34. The one on Fashola uh, you'll find on page 41 of the Nation newspaper. And Raw urges Eagle to batter Brazil. That's on page 47. All set for clash. 
and the Bayelsa and Kogi 2019. Uh, we have a picture story there also of the president uh, receiving the report from Professor Sagai yesterday. We've recovered one trillion naira looted cash, says Sagai, and that's on the front page, but it's continued also on page seven. And uh, Mayina's uh, one, one billion naira asset seized. Neglect Buhari Bex oil rich area. And the assembly threatens, threatens Ambedi's arrest and Austria and wins Nobel Prize for Literature. That's on page 42. Um, we already talked about some of the headlines. You yeah, want to make any about, intervention? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to talk about Fastrella's. Yes. Uh, yes, what he has said about uh, the budget being low. Five billion being a bit low. 157 billion. Yes, one, exactly. 157 billion naira being a bit low. I mean, he's. He's obviously saying it with sentiments attached to his previous role mm. as Lagos State governor, governor, which the executive governor of Lagos State, where he was obviously privy to a lot of the deals and transactions that are infrastructural, infrastructural in nature. Um, I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was um, able to go to an event yesterday where the current governor of Lagos State was talking about. Um, the the projects they are doing in Lagos State mm. and basically how much money they're willing to spend for those infrastructural projects and it w from that we learned that uh, vehicular density mm -hmm. in uh, Lagos, Lagos State is 200 uh, vehicles per kilometer. Oh. You know, yes. So that you know that because there's going to be a population population explosion that they've spoken about. Mm. So we we were. Um, we know that there are 22,000 roads in Lagos, for example, just using Lagos as a case study, and as, yes, and using it as a microcosm of the rest of uh, uh, the Nigeria, mm -hmm. exactly. And um, I don't, I'm, I, in some of the details escape me, but I, I would imagine that he's, mm. he's working from the basis or the lenses of being the former executive mm. governor. So he has yeah. a certain uh, background. Yeah, and insight, him. exactly. And he's saying that the ministry is already owing 2.93 uh, billion now. So if you're giving the 157, that's, they don't have the 157. They're working at the deficit, exactly. Short of it. Exactly. Uh, and he will be in the better position to speak. I mean, someone who's been... Um, and that part, as you have explained. So we'll go to the back of the nation newspaper, and then there's something on community matters. Shegun Gade uh, guessing. Uh, please find out what this is about. And then, of course, your hardball is there, and poor results says today. Grab a copy of the nation newspaper and find out what this is about. And we we'll quickly now move to this day, Ife, and it says FG begins installation of Category Three ILLs to improve air safety, and airlines save. 524 million naira monthly from reduced uh, flight time. That's on the front page there, but it's continued as you can see on page five. And Nigeria to team up with Cameroon to set cocoa price. Oh, that's on page eight. And Police Service Commission to meet over Buhari's aid says the ferment of retirement uh, against service rules. SDIG on Day urges compliance with rules of law. That's also on the front page, but it's continued on page 8. CBN, why credit easing will not increase non-performing loans, plans to harness all tools to punish defaulters. That's on the front page, but again, it's continued on page 5 of the nation, uh, sorry, this day newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Senators fought 2020 budget projections. That's on page 5. You find uh, that story contained on page 5. And on the back of this day is a column, um, columnist, and a column they call me October 1st with the picture of the president displayed there. Call me October 1st. Find out what it is about. Any interventions on this day? Uh, I just wanted to make a quick note of why credit easing yeah. may not increase non-performing um, loans. And that's the big story, so to speak. Here. Yes, again, this is again uh, probably a response to criticism, I'm sure, mm -hmm. from the federal government in terms of trying to make sure that bad loans, the rates of bad loans, are brought to as, as much of a low as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, again, at this uh, event that I was privileged to attend yesterday, we, uh, we, we learned that the, there's going to be a, a credit register, hmm. a, um, sorry, a, a collateral register. Okay. So for every time you take out a loan, you know, there, you, it's going to be, there's going to be a central hub for where we, as, used as a reference point hmm. for all credit checkers to ensure that, you know, that, these, that they, they're not over-collateralized. 
these okay. assets. Yeah, and also the cl the categories and classes of assets have widened. I know with CBN especially, they have a particular fund for the creatives. Creatives, it's very difficult for you to sort of uh, evaluate mm -hmm. the assets that a creative would typically have outside their hard assets. So right now, the um, the collateral register has opened the description oh, of so different, yeah, different kinds of assets, including intellectual property, which is a big win for Nigeria, especially mm -hmm. if we're moving towards a digital and technology age. So, it, but then again, we have to just be sure that the cri right criteria is, is in assessing these sort of assets are put in place so that we are, that we're getting proper evaluations. It's, it's a bit more ephemeral than actual tangible assets. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, uh, so I think uh, basically the same thing that we've gotten uh, in the other papers as well. And then there's the complete sports. Neither you nor I talk sports. So I would say please grab a copy <laughs> of the sports, complete sports uh, operation. Get NEMA, my United sponsors, uh, ready to pay 200 million dollars for Brazil star. That's interesting. Moses six Chelsea's return in January. Messi, I don't like being called God. Okay. And then Real, Ma Real Madrid uh, split. Zidane wants Popba. Perez wants Ericsson. Oh, please find out what this is about. Brazil versus uh, Nigeria Sunday, October the 13th at 1 p.m. Full house at 21 uh, as 21 Eagles begin training. Team to train twice today ahead of Brazil showdown. A turbo out of Brazil friendly and then Golden Eagle Storm Brazil and all of that. Please grab a copy of Complete Sports and I want to say thank you Ifeoji for being yeah. with me this thank morning you very uh, much. for the off the press. And it's at this point that we'll call it a wrap for a newspaper review which is off the press. We'll do this every day, uh, every week rather, from weekly without the weekend. So Monday to Friday we do this here on Plus TV Africa at 8.30 a.m. where we tell you all about the newspaper and we call it of the press. So see you again on Monday and the coming week. I am Amaka Okoye. Have yourself a great day.